All right, time now to chat with our Seahawks writer here at The Athletic, Michael Sean Dugar. Good to see you, man. You I mean, I've seen you. Yeah, I saw right. you last night. I've right. seen you around. But it's good to actually do this again and yeah. chat some football. Yeah, man. I'm happy to be here, man. I'm a big fan of your show. Thank you, man. Good I appreciate fan. that. Yeah, man. All right. The reason the Seahawks are involved with this, okay? We did a quarterback carousel show two weeks ago. And I didn't really talk about the Seahawks that much because in my mind, Geno's going to be there. I, I just think that they, I thought they were going to commit to Geno. I don't know why I, I'm thinking this, but in, in my head, it's like Geno Smith is the quarterback of the Seahawks. He's going to be the quarterback of the Seahawks for the next couple of years. How sure are we that Geno is like a multi-year commitment for this team or is quarterback on the table at five to you? It's 100% on the table. And this is, this is where the philosophy and the background of the general manager is important. John Snyder, you know, he was a, a mentee of Ron Wolf in Green Bay. And he was a yeah. mentee of Ted Thompson. And what did he learn from those guys? Several things. But one of them was take a quarterback. Yeah. Ron Wolf just kept taking quarterbacks. Now, Brett Favre was healthy, so they didn't need those guys, but they just kept taking them, kept taking them, kept taking them. <laughs> and John has publicly lamented the fact that they've taken two quarterbacks. This is going to be his 14th draft as a GM of the Seahawks. He's taken two. Russell Wilson in 2012, and then Alex Magoo in the seventh round of the 2018 draft. <laughs> There's no way that's a real person. <laughs> he's not, yeah, I, I know it's, it sounds like a movie character, yes. But that's he's never taken one in the first round. So John is of the school that, hey, yo, we got to take a guy every year because the, the asset is too valuable. Yeah. And he's correct. And even when Russell Wilson was at his peak, John still went to Patrick Mahomes' pro day. You know how bad you got to want a guy to fly to Lubbock? <laughs> Just, you know, like, you got to want a guy pretty bad. The very next year, Russell Wilson was fresh off of leading the league in touchdown passes in 2017. He was Seattle's leading rusher in 2017. John flew to Wyoming to go see Josh Allen. So that just shows you that having a good, even well-compensated quarterback on the roster does not dissuade John from being interested in the high quarterbacks. You know, they had pick... I don't even know if they had a first-round pick in 2017. They had pick like 18 in 2018, the Josh Allen draft. You know, he still scouted guys who went in the top 10. So, yes, when you look at John's background, because he's making the pick, right? So when you look at his background, a quarterback is totally in play at five. Now, which quarterback? We can talk about that for two hours. But his background suggests that he's not bluffing when, yesterday, when on Tuesday he said that we will seriously consider taking a quarterback. I think you have to say that for multiple reasons. One, you want to drum up as much interest in that pick Correct. as possible Correct. for the quarter teams that might move up because we were talking about this with Joe Person yesterday. If you're a team looking to move up, there aren't that many like natural dance partners for me. No. Because Arizona, first-year GMs are always kind of a wild card. You look at other teams that have been in that position, the comparison I've made consistently is 2021 draft. You have Terry Fontenot picking a four, first year as a GM. You have Brad Holmes picking at seven, first year as a GM. They stay put. They pick yeah. guys. They pick elite, elite players. If Will Anderson, guys like that, are available at that number three pick because quarterbacks went one, two, if you're Monty Austin for it, it's like, fuck it. I'm just taking the guy. Mm -hmm. I'm taking the good guy. I'm not going to worry about it. So if that dries up, the Colts maybe trade up to one, maybe they stay put at four. Seattle now becomes like a natural trade partner for teams that maybe want to go up and get that guy if Seattle doesn't want one. So if I'm John Schneider, I'm telling everybody who right, will listen right. that I love all the quarterbacks because I want to make that pick as attractive as possible. Yeah, no, I, in my head, I like to think of like the most extreme versions of things. So I imagine John just like getting in an Uber and like telling the Uber driver, yeah, no, man, I just saw this guy named Will Levis. <laughs> like he's, he's great. And then getting on the flight and the flight attendant says, hey, would you like some cookies? And he's like, yeah, but you know who really likes cookies? Anthony Richardson. You know, and just telling everybody everything he uh, feels about all of these quarterbacks. Because you're right. As much as I just gave the context about the fact that John's probably not bluffing when he said that, He's got value in bluffing. He's incentivized to talk about him in this way. And yes. also, John Schneider's the type of guy I think they would just talk to a random barista about how much he loves Anthony Richardson. What do you think is the most likely outcome for the Seattle Seahawks quarterback room in 2023? I think Geno's going to be the starter in 2023. On what sort of deal? Is it the tag? Is it a long-term contract? How does Geno get brought back? That's a good question. I would guess that... It's a three-year deal that's really a two. Yeah, makes sense. And the way Seattle structures its contracts, usually they give you a signing bonus and they guarantee the base salary in year one. And the, the, the base salary in year two, like, vests later. Usually the fifth day after the uh, waiver period is usually Seattle's pretty uh, standard contract structure. So, for example, 
DK Metcalf and Quandre Diggs just signed three-year deals last offseason, and their contracts for their base salaries for this season like just became guaranteed like February 17th or something like that. So I could see Geno having a structure like that because, A, they do it like that usually. But the other reason would be, let's say you don't have a base salary guarantee for 2024 on a three-year deal for Geno. You can still take a guy in 2023 at five, say you believe in Geno, but if he goes a Derek Carr path, you have the same thing as the Raiders. The Raiders had an out. It's a very similar situation to what the Raiders just did with Derek Carr. So I think Geno will be back on a multi-year deal because that gives them the most flexibility, not only to still take a quarterback, but then fix the roster. I mean, we all saw that playoff game in San Francisco. John said it the other day. He said, our guys know what it looks like. We know. We, we got the shit beat out of us. So that's the standard, very similar to when the Rams won the championship. So, oh, we know what championship football looks like. We played those guys twice to kick their ass. You know, so I think Gino on a long-term deal gives them the flexibility not only to build the team, but they can still get out of it. You know, if, if you know, the clock strikes 12 on them, you know, Cinderella, you know, is not the, the fine joint at the ball no more. And then in 2024, they, they can move on if they need to. That feels like the best solution for me. And we had this conversation with Colton Pouncey earlier in the week about where the Lions are at. All the same shit applies to the Seahawks. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You have a team that made the playoffs last year. The Lions even make the playoffs last year. Right. The Seahawks did. If you commit to Geno on that sort of deal that gives you flexibilities and off ramps mm -hmm. over the next two years, but you pick a quarterback at five, you can very easily play Geno this year, see how it plays out, let that guy sit, you be competitive, and then you hand the keys over to whoever you draft at five in 2024 when the team is kind of ready to do that. All of that applies. And mm -hmm. I think that this is, and I think. Maybe Pete said it yesterday. It's a rare opportunity that they have. Yes, like that is very, what said, yes. And that's the word I kept using way too many times on the show we did with Colton. It's a rare chance to trade your way into the top five with this sort of roster, with these sort of pieces, where you can have your cake and eat it too. Yep. You can be competitive, but you can also build for the future. I think a lot more teams would want to do what the Chiefs did if they were in a position to do it. Correct. And the Seahawks are one of those very few teams that if they want to pursue that path, is in a position to follow that model. Yeah, and to put in perspective how rare it is, right? So the Seahawks had the sixth pick in 2010. They took Russell Okun. That was off of the Jim Mora 2009 Seahawks going, I believe, 5-11. and 11. So that wasn't even a Pete Carroll. They had a native top 10 pick, but it wasn't Pete's fault, right? The only other time they've had a native top 10 pick was last draft, and it was pick 10 that went to the Jets yeah, the because of the away. Jamal Adams trade, yeah. but it was the one that became Garrett Wilson, and that was still only pick 10. They have, Pete Carroll has only been the coach one time where they have then had a top 10 pick, and even that's the year Russ broke his finger. You know, that just puts in perspective, Pete Carroll and Mike Tomlin are very similar in that way. They just don't suck enough to be here, and Pete Carroll knows that. There's that uh, clip I love of Mike Tomlin talking to Chase Young before a game a couple years ago. He said, I don't ever want to lose as many games. you got to lose to get you, yeah. And because Mike Tomlin's like, I don't do that. So, yes, it's super rare, and that puts in perspective. And even now their top five pick is from Denver. You know, their, their native pick is 20, so it's so rare, and they're going to keep that in mind with – we can't just pass on a guy because we might not ever be here That's again. exactly right. Yeah. And that, that, that is why I think you just have to think so long and hard about it because you're not going to have the pathways to do this again. No. No.